Welcome to another episode of Drug Chug, and today we'll talk about aspirin and how it works, plus some pharmacology. So let's get right into it. A quick breakdown of everything in this video. First, we'll talk about how platelets work, and then we'll get into aspirin, the dosing and mechanism of action. Then we'll talk about the side effects. Then we'll talk about an aspirin combination product. And then the summary, and then a short quiz, as always, at the end to see what we retained. So first, we need to learn how platelets actually work so that we could understand why and how aspirin is beneficial to us. So first, here we have a very calm platelet, and these are just circulating throughout our blood. And once they sense some tissue injury, they start to activate. So they could sense like a paper cut or let's say, you know, you fell and you scraped your knee or whatever it is, and they sense that tissue damage, they start becoming a mad platelet. They start becoming aggressive. And once they're in this active, aggressive form, there are two sensors that we look for. We have thromboxane 2 and ADP. Remember these two. And these two sensors cause platelet recruitment and aggregation. And that just means that the angry platelets all coming together as like one team. And this is referred to as a platelet plug. And this is a very weak blood clot. All of this is happening and they're recruiting together. We also have something called the coagulation cascade, which is just a bunch of steps that eventually lead up to fibrin being made. And fibrin is literally just a fiber or like a string. And what fibrin does is it intertwines with this platelet plug, causing a fibrin clot. So we have all of these mad platelets and all of this fibrin sticking together. And this is a pretty strong blood clot. So the important thing to take from all of this is that there are two chemical signals. We have thromboxane A2 and ADP that cause this platelet aggregation, giving us our platelet plug. And then the coagulation cascade making fibrin so that we could have a fibrin clot. Now that we know how platelets actually work, let's talk about aspirin. So aspirin has two doses. We have our baby aspirin dose, which is 81 milligrams. And then we have our normal dose, which is 325 milligrams. For now, we're going to focus on the baby aspirin because we're talking about platelets. So it all starts with arachidonic acid, and this is produced through our prostaglandin pathway. And essentially, we have an enzyme called COX-1, which converts arachidonic acid to thromboxane A2. And remember, thromboxane A2 was one of those chemical signals that we need to pay attention to. Now, what thromboxane A2 does is it causes the platelet aggregation. So when aspirin is taken... It blocks COX-1, which stops thromboxane A2, which stops the platelet aggregation. And what's cool is you only need 81 milligrams to fully block that COX-1 pathway. Now, because of this, the FDA has approved aspirin to prevent and treat heart attack and stroke patients. And again, it's because it blocks the COX-1 pathway which stops blood from clotting. So I also want to note that if a patient takes a regular dose of a 325 milligram tablet, well, what happens is it not only blocks COX-1, but it can also block the COX-2 pathway. And the COX-2 pathway has to do with more of the pain, inflammation, fever, and some other conditions. But we'll talk about that more in the NSAID video. All right, so let's talk about some of the side effects that aspirin can cause. So we said that it can inhibit COX-1. Well, COX-1 is also responsible for having protective factors in our stomach. So it produces gastric mucus and it helps with cell turnover. So if we block COX-1, we also block these protective factors of the stomach. So when inhibiting COX-1, we could see things that aren't too severe, like dyspepsia, which is just difficulty digesting food, and we might see upper abdomen pain. But if it gets a little bit more severe, we could have peptic ulcers or GI ulcerations in our stomach, 
And the reason for that is if we don't have that protective mucosa layer, then the stomach acid will keep attacking our stomach wall and it'll start producing these ulcers. And if it gets severe enough, and this is the most severe, it could actually lead to gastrointestinal bleeding. And this is where we'll actually have bleeding of the stomach. And one thing to note is that it's not only in the stomach that we might see bleeding. We might see non-GI bleeding as well. And that's because we're blocking thromboxin A2 not only in the stomach, but essentially throughout our entire body. And another side effect of aspirin to take note of is tinnitus. And this is the ringing of the ear. And this is dose dependent, just like all our other NSAIDs. But if we think about it, tinnitus is very rare when we're dosing aspirin for antiplatelet effects, right? Because we said that aspirin has a full COX-1 blocking ability when we give that 81 milligram baby dose of aspirin. So tinnitus should be very rare in these patients because we're giving such a low dose. But if we give them a bigger dose, like a regular 325 milligram tablet, it does not provide better cardiovascular protection. We get that full cardiovascular protection at the small dose. And one thing I want to make clear is that, yes, we say baby aspirin, but you'd be shocked how many patients would come in thinking that it's for actual babies. And it's not. Even though aspirin is approved for children over the age of three, we want to avoid giving aspirin to any child or teenager because of the risk of Ray's syndrome. And Ray's syndrome is a very rare complication that happens that we've seen with aspirin. And what happens is we have a, a child that suffers from confusion and then they'll have swelling in their brain and then it'll cause liver damage. So this is a very serious side effect that we might see in children and teenagers. And we typically see it when teenagers are recovering from chicken pox or if they had the flu. So always avoid giving aspirin to these patient population. So we do have one combo product of aspirin and it's actually called Agrinox. And here in a single dose, we'll have 25 milligrams of aspirin and 200 milligrams of dipyridamol. And here we could see that we have to take it twice a day. So for the aspirin part, we already said that it inhibits COX-1 and that stops thromboxane A2, which was one of the signaling pathways for platelet aggregation. So on the dipyridamol side, it blocks the response to ADP. And if you remember from the beginning, that was the second messenger that we need to pay attention to. So this combination product blocks both thromboxin A2 and it also blocks ADP. So this combination medication is used only for secondary stroke prevention, meaning our patient has already had a stroke and we're just trying to prevent another stroke from occurring. This medication comes in an extended release form, which means that we cannot crush up the capsule. And whenever we have a stroke patient, there is a good chance that they're going to have difficulty swallowing. So this might not be a good option for them because they need to swallow that capsule whole. Even though this is an extended release product, you still have to take it twice a day. And if we look at the dosing, we have 25 milligrams of aspirin. So if we take it twice a day, it bumps up to 50 milligrams every day, which is a pretty good dose to stop that platelet aggregation. One good counseling point here is that the dipyridamol can cause vasodilation, which leads to headache. And typically we'll see headache in one out of three patients. So it's very problematic. But one thing we have to tell our patients is that it does get better over time. So let's take a quick summary and then a short quiz. So first we talked about how platelets work. We said we had a calm platelet until it senses a cut or a scrape and then it becomes a mad platelet. And then this mad platelet starts to aggregate and recruit so that there's a group of them. And this is done by thromboxin A2 and ADP. So then we talked about aspirin and we said how aspirin is a COX-1 inhibitor. So it blocks this enzyme which stops thromboxin A2, which stops aggregation. And then we also talked about a combination product, 
of aspirin and dipyridamol, and the brand name was Agrinox. And we said how this has both aspirin and dipyridamol, which causes thromboxane A2 and ADP to be blocked to fully stop aggregation. And we said aspirin, it has a 81 milligram dose, that's our baby aspirin, and higher doses can cause ulcers, and then also higher the dose we could have tinnitus because it is an NSAID. For Agrinox, we said that it is two medications in one. We have 25 milligrams of aspirin and 200 milligrams of dipyridamol, and this is a twice a day dosing, and it's extended release, meaning we can't crush it up. And then also, one big side effect is one in three patients will experience headaches, but it does get better. And there you go. That's everything. So let's take a short quiz to see what we retained. So question one, how many milligrams of aspirin fully inhibits the COX-1 pathway? Question two, which pathway primarily mediates the pain and inflammation pathway? Question three, what is the most severe side effect from taking aspirin? Question 4. What is the right strength combination for Agrinox?